grown up. I mean, last year now, George said this George said to me, Mummy, do you know, he said, I don't think all the boys at my school are shrinking. That's right. It was so big, and now they're so little. Yeah, it's very big. Very big. All right? Yeah. Okay, darling, and Dad will, Dad will write. Okay? A new boy. A new boy. A new boy. Hello? You seem heavily burdened. And how's Alexander? Good. You're looking forward to it. You are really, aren't you? He is really. We Super. Had nice tea at the George where we went oh, last night. Lovely. Time. Can I take any of that? Well, it's, it's probably not heavy. It's just bulky. Is any of this very heavy? Yes. That is. Let me. Gosh, that's too heavy. What have you got in it? Bricks. <laughs> Do you want me to carry that for you? So the whole tribe has come. Yes, they've all come for me to see, say goodbye. Um, Splendid. Are we going to be head of rugby? Or... Oh. Well, I look so very grown up. Bye, darling. I will take a George will look after Bye. you. He might Love even you. be in head of your dinner. Okay. I've always thought that a good prep school teaches boys how to integrate with their fellows. And when boys come here aged seven or eight, they've never had the experience of living together in a small community. And uh, it's an exciting time to see how they develop and how they relate to each other within that community. Sometimes there are problems, sometimes it's, it works a treat. My very first memory was an overwhelming smell, that institutional smell of polish. A horrifying row of regimented beds all in one straight line. Parting with my mother, the sadness in the dorm, the shock of being thrown in with all these noisy kids the next morning at breakfast. The school drive, my father shaking me by the hand instead of hugging me. A sense of being in prison. The more I get to know myself, and the more I get to understand children, because I have my own children, the harder it is for me to actually accept and believe that this happened to me. I believe my parents loved me. I believe they thought they were doing the best thing. And I believe that the schools were well-meaning and thought they were doing the right thing as well. What's even harder for me to understand and to make sense of is that in 1993, in a civilized Western country, that we are still doing this to our young children. I think it will be a success. I may be wrong, in which case we'll have to think again. But um, we're hoping that it won't be a disaster. Obviously, one's having last minute thoughts day before he goes. So you're just going to take these three, are you? You're going to be happy with those things? Yeah, I might choose some more. Well, you've got to decide so I I'll can... I'll turn it stuck. <laughs> Where's the key? I don't know. Good boy. He's in here. Right, we'll take you to school in cufflinks and hand you over. It seems to make them more self-reliant and they have, they have a lovely time because they're with their friends and they can do things in the evenings with friends with facilities that they wouldn't have if they were at home. Um, and so it is very much a second home, a home from home uh, for them. I've been heaving with the motion for about two months really of Harry leaving, but I'm going to get used to it. It's going to be all right. The good thing is that he is so excited. I think the school is heaven. And I will be absolutely astounded if he's not happy there, but I am miserable about him going. But at the same time, I'm thrilled for him. It's a lovely house, isn't it? And all the lights are on. 
Oh, look, that is was it one He's waiting for you, look. Was it one sort of, um, uh, mansion? Mansion, yeah. Yeah. Like Tolstoy. Hello. Hello, Harry. Hello. Nice Hello. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Hello, Harry. Nice to see you. I had a very interesting conversation last night with a Frenchman I sat next to at dinner, and I just couldn't resist getting onto education because the French have such different feelings about education. They cannot understand how we can possibly do what we do. How we can bear to send our children away when they should be coming home to us every night and talking to us every night. How we must lose touch with them and how vital it is to see them changing every day. I totally disagree. I think it's the making of them, this sending them away and you know I can see what happens by seeing him every three weeks it's not a drama really Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Poker time? Yeah. Would you write to me? Yes. It's heavy isn't it? And books. Yes. Sometimes there's the odd, odd tear from a mother, which is not surprising, uh, sometimes. Tonight, my wife and I, between us, will phone every parent, the new boys, and just reassure them that the child is asleep and has had a lovely day, uh, and it just helps the parents uh, down another gin and tonic and go to bed happy. <laughs> I remember from first being sent away were, I think, uh, excitement, uh, fear, largely bewilderment, and then later the loneliness and the homesickness. If you imagine a seven or eight-year-old child finds himself in a custom-ridden school with all kinds of rules and regulations and strangers without the familiar things of home, the need is to adapt fast. He has to adapt fast, sink or swim. I think the first night, as I say, will be all right, but probably be in a day or two when he suddenly thinks, well, I hope he won't, but he might suddenly think, oh, I wish I was at home, you know, once you know what you're in for. But um, I hope he'll be all right. What happens in many children's minds is something that we psychologists call a double bind. And this one runs something like this. Mummy and Daddy say they love me. I know that they love me because they've said it, and yet they send me away. If they love me, why did they send me away? But I know it's important to them, and it's cost a lot of money. So if I show them I don't like it, they'll be disappointed, and if they're disappointed, they won't love me, so I won't show them I hate it. Either that, or the child reasons, if I don't like it, there must be something wrong with me. Maybe that's why they sent me away. Either way, the child is caught in this trap and can only get out by shutting down on his feelings and thereby betraying himself. I have little doubt that headmasters and teachers do sincerely think they're doing the best for, chil for children and that they can develop a very successful character from this kind of education. 
Against that, the people I have seen in my groups and in my therapy are telling me that there has been a, a price to pay. And what I am interested in is, is this a price which individuals and society can afford to pay? My mother said that one of the reasons that she sent me away to prep school, to board, was that it would be a substitute for my father who'd left us and wasn't there. Now, the problem with that, of course, was that the school wasn't and couldn't be an adequate substitute for parenting by a father. And of course, I lost my mother into the bargain as well. Having been dumped at boarding school at the age of nine, I felt that really I'd had to grow up overnight. I felt an extraordinary exclusion from the family that I'd left behind. It's quite natural for you to, to miss mummy and daddy. We all miss our family when we're away for them. And if you have a few tears, well that's nothing to worry about, it's very normal. I have a few tears every now and then too, so I think you, being much younger, are quite allowed to have a few. But don't worry, that gets better too. You find that every day that you're here, as things become more familiar, and you get busier and busier, and you're doing more and more and more, you begin not to forget about one day. You never forget them, of course not. But it gets easier being away from them. All right? And it's not very long until the first day of the act, and you'll be seeing them. All right? Well, I remember seeing the bars on the windows that night, and I thought, oh, flip. Um, well, I really, really, really didn't like it. The second I saw the wheel go past the gate, the back of the car, oh. I really, really felt like I was just being dumped here. In three weeks, I thought, three weeks. Mm, still seems quite a long time, but it's not quite so bad now. But I remember I only had one friend. I'd only met him once before, and uh, we just sat together. And he'd only, he'd met most of the other people, so he was going around, you know, with all the other people. I was left on my own. One of the older boys caught me, uh, well, not caught me, but found me crying behind one of the lockers. Most people don't like it that much when they come here, but they get used to it. I've forgotten who it was, but there was someone who really, really hated it here. And um, he actually decided that he wouldn't come back the next term, but uh, his mother and his father I uh, actually had to drag him just about back to school and, well, now he's fine. Those are really bad skateboards. I mean, they're not really bad, but... Can you do a full turn? Yeah. Um, yeah. Ralston Saw can do two and a half. I know. He goes, Ralston Saw can go round in circles, then do a flip over. If I'd been asked, aged nine or ten, how I was doing, what I would have said was, well, I was homesick at first, and I I've settled down quite a lot now, thank you. Um, and, you, you know, you, you can't be attached to your mum's apron strings forever. Um, and I, I feel much happier now here, um, and, and it's jolly good fun in the dorms, you know. You learnt to be who you knew you had to be, and you had to be a good chap and be getting on with it and, and be part of the system. That's what I learned to do. But I went, I went on missing my home terribly. Ha Hassard was crying the other night and we comforted him because of he was feeling a bit homesick. And Bagnall was la last night. Bagnall wasn't. We just said, don't worry. It's OK. I'm going to see Mummy and Daddy in two weeks. But 
It's really nice to be in a dormitory with a lot of other people. And so uh, I suppose that's, that's all the good things about the dormitory. Yeah. I'm hard put to think of any boy who by the age of 10 or 11 has not become well used to the whole concept of boarding and he's settled in. It doesn't mean to say that he uh, necessarily is, is going to look on these days as the happiest days of his life. Um, there are boys who will always find school a trauma, whether it be as a day boy um, or as a boarder. Some of the teachers say it's quite good to leave them because they've, um, they've got to have a good old cry to get it all out of them and then they'll feel better. But <coughs> I don't know, that sort of works, but I still prefer to have my mum next to me. <laughs> Anybody who knows a seven-year-old or eight-year-old knows that they are attached to their parents, they're attached to the places they live. And that there's nothing wrong with that. It's human. And to, to grow up in an environment where you consider that to be a failure, of course that has an impact in adult life. You grow up, after 10 years of that experience, deeply believing that it is a failure to have feelings about being attached to another adult that you love. When you're then growing up and you're in your 30s and your 40s and you're trying to form relationships, close, intimate relationship with someone else, that is a great mountain to climb, to believe that it's going to be okay to get that close to a human being again. Well, they say they sent me there because they love me and because they wanted the best possible education for me. Um, and the school also said that it was a sense of privilege to be there. But although I was told these things, the effect was that I was actually pushed away and rejected by my parents. And still now, when people say they love me or they like me, I, I get the sense of distrust and still fear that they're going to reject me and push me out. No, 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 when I see some of the criticisms of boarding school, uh, they're often fueled by people who've had unhappy memories of, uh, of their own boarding school days, probably 20 or 30 years ago. Now, I know of no school, and I suspect there are very few, if any, that still operate uh, in the same way they did 20 or 30 years ago. Um, they have changed, they've had to change, and for the most part, they've wanted to change. And the boarding schools now are much warmer, uh, places physically and emotionally than ever they were <laughs> um, and also they're operated on a much more relaxed and pleasant way I went to boarding school I did not enjoy it and so really from my point of view I'm delighted to be running a boarding school today where the boys are much happier than ever I was at school and so the debate has been unbalanced and I think it's done quite a lot of, of damage in a way to the good things that boarding schools have to offer. Her hand shot up. Rebecca hesitated just inside the doorway of the loo, the length of the low dark room vanishing into shadow, the little green windows hard that lit nothing. Yeah. 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 You 
You've told me already. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure he wouldn't say anything sad if he did ring, but I've heard of children, friends of mine who've got children at prep schools this week too, and they're at prep schools where they're allowed to ring and they've got all these telephone cards and everything, and um, you know, the children ring up and saying, please take me home. They're not unhappy at all, but it's the obvious thing to say when you ring up your mother, is it, can I go home? Can I come home? Where can I see you again? I mean, it's rather obvious, really. So I, I'm just, I'm much happier without a telephone contact with him. I think it just sort of uh, interrupts the whole thing, Sonny, to talk to your mother. And you know, mm. as Caroline said, you can't really talk to an 18-year-old on the telephone. They're very stilted, yes. sort of one-sided conversations. Um, and they probably can't express themselves very well. And uh, so everybody gets slightly the wrong opinion, I think. Yeah. I've got a bit homesick. I can think of Pierre. A friend of ours used to have to be heavily sedated in order to go to school. He's a perfectly normal chap now, but um, I don't know what upset him about the place. <laughs> He's been sort of reduced to a state of coma, virtually, sort of dragged off to school. <laughs> Goodness. Um, but but it did him good in the end. Pretty grim. <laughs> well, no, I think he hated it. I think he probably should have stayed at home or something. Actually, my brother ran away from prep school. Um, didn't, didn't get very far. Somebody luckily found him going up the drive. And something was really worrying him. And it, they never really got to the bottom of it. But basically, I think children are very worried about admitting who's bullying them or why, what's happening to them. I did say to Harry before he left various things. And I did said, said you know, would he tell me if some, anything odd happened to him or was done to him or anybody was beastly to him? And would he tell me? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Mm, they say that I'll get used to it soon. When I'm really settled in well. And what do you think? Do you think they're right? Yeah. To all outward appearances, I would say I adjusted um, in a reasonable length of time. But I don't feel that I ever recovered from that experience in the sense that it became normal to carry around with me that level of grief and loss and despair. After tea, we went to bed. Before that, we did our teeth and faces. I love you, love from Harry. And he's done Starship One and the exclamation mark, which is really sweet. So I like that. That, that, that really made me very happy. But I was in floods of tears about it. But I liked it very much. And then on Monday, we got another letter. I mean, when I see this postmark, my, my heart just leaps. Please sit down. If you have finished your letter, you may read, you may draw, you may look at an encyclopedia, you may have some plasticine. You do not talk to other people until I have all the letters. Now, this is the rule this week and every week. I think I came out really believing that work makes free and that stuck with me for many, many years, to the point where it cost me my ability to parent my own children, it cost me my marriage, it cost me, in fact, the quality of my career. In other ways, people find that they have learnt to survive and cope very well in an, in an institution environment and they go on to find lives in other institutions, which can be very satisfactory. In the bar, in uh, the army, in uh, uh, the church of, uh, or in medicine, for example, that they function very well in the institution but not in the home. On the one hand, you're prepared, you're prepped in this way to be a part of the establishment, to be successful, to be self-reliant and aggressive and all these things. But in fact, somewhere inside you, when it comes down to real relationships, to dealing with the real things in life, you're unbelievably weak and ill-prepared. And the tendency, of course, is to run away. 
It's to run away back to that work mode. I can remember making a virtue of leaving home at five o'clock on a Sunday afternoon to catch the plane to go somewhere. I'm going back to the front. I'm going back to my troops. I'm doing my duty. O Lord, save the Queen. And teach her how to resist her. Let's pray for those people holding responsible positions in the world in whose hands lie a lasting peace. Let's pray especially for our own Prime Minister, members of the government. Bless our Prime Minister, O Lord, those who bear office under the Crown and all members of Parliament, and strengthen them in their great responsibilities. Go on, off you go. Touch him! Touch him! Two hands! Get him! Up there, look! Yes! It has changed me, and the one thing which I can do now is get used. Because when I'm older, I'm going to have, and, and, and much later, well, when I'm quite, when I'm older, and I'm something like 20, I'm going to have, yeah, and if I become a businessman, I'm going to have to be able to manage by myself. And, and so being at boarding school is, is a bit, I think it's quite a lot about being, being able to manage and handle yourself without any sort of like help from other people. Well, you, everybody needs help from other people so, sometimes in their, li in their life. And, but, 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 but coming to boarding school for me is a real achievement. It's made me more grown up and it makes you more grown up and it gives you better education and when you might become a prefect, prefect in Division 1 and it gives you a responsibility and it really has changed me quite a lot and I'm able to manage by myself. How old are you? And, um, I'm almost, I'm 10 in Nove on November the 3rd because um, I'm, I'm 9 at the moment and I had a and I had a clown birthday cake last time and it was really nice but on the nose it was that really yummy stuff and it was red and it and I had it really and I had um and I had the nose all to myself and it was really nice <laughs> and so I ate all of it because I, I went right that nose is mine and I had a piece of cake and I had the nose since you've seen her? Um, three weeks yeah. since, I, since I last saw her. And um, it's, 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 I'm, I'm really excited because of, um, when I get home I can just like change into my home clothes and just like muck around and do builds like, and go back and see my next door neighbours and everything. Hello, sir. Hello, Harry. No, can I carry that? Gosh, it's nice to see you, isn't it? <laughs> you're having a great time. We love your letters. And are you, are you keeping? Um, you're keeping them. Oh, well done. Good. So we. So, darling, how is it? Is it wonderful? Well, then. Is the food good? Very. Is it? Very yeah. good. Well, I really do like it here. It's, it's a really nice place. Really good food, really good grounds, friends. But at home, I guess, when it feels more, you know, you're near your toys, you're near your pets. You've got, you've got your mother and you've got your father and your family around you. And then here you've got, well, you've got your, about all you've got from home that you 
can really, really cuddle or anything is your teddies, but you don't need them much. Now then, a message from your mum. Okay. Phoning up from Oxford. Oh. Terribly held up. Oh. So she'll be here, but it might be in as much as an hour and a half. At worst, might be a bit early. <sighs> okay? choose between two places, school and home. I, I, I would you choose home, but <laughs> I would, in a way, I would use, choose school, but I, I like home best. <laughs> make it, I'm going to make it do a wheelie. Get it coming towards the camera in a minute. And of course it was a bit heart-wrenching leaving your little boy in this wacky great building um, with what were sort of really um, a bunch of strangers. But now I've got to know all the, the tutors and, the, and, and the, some of the other parents and stuff and you feel quite happy about leaving your child there because it's like leaving them with your best friends. It's hard to choose which is best yeah. for me. And if anybody, if anybody ever asked me, what do you think you should do? Do you think you you should stay with your mummy, or or do you, do, you, do, you, do you want do you really want to stay with your mummy, or do you really want a good education? No, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. I wouldn't be able to answer that question. Not really. I don't want to go. Oh, come on. Clean shut. Mummy, how long till I see you again? Um. Oh, uh, uh, three weeks? Two weeks? Two and a half weeks? Can't be two and a half. Three then. Um, I'll, I'll look in my diary. Yeah, what's my son's voice? The most fundamental issue in here about boarding is no matter how well-meaning the boarding schools are, no matter how committed the staff are, they do not give the children in their care love. So when you put a child in boarding school, you are talking about putting a child in an environment without love for maybe three quarters of the year at an age in which love is so important to that child. There's many a parent who cannot give 
uh, that time to uh, their children. Both of them probably have to work. And so the child becomes or can become a sort of latchkey kid. And so I think in those situations, it's far better that a child boards and then he can have a wonderful time and then see his parents when they've got time to, to spend with him. Why put children through it unless it's absolutely essential? The only criteria that I can think of that wouldn't justify sending a child away from the family to school is if the family environment was genuinely so unhappy that the child would be more stable and more secure at school. Otherwise, I can't see from my own experience a single benefit in separating a child age eight or nine from its family of origin and giving that child an institution for a parent. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going off, we're not waiting for Okay, right, good night then.